Ideas are scary. They come into this world ugly and messy. Ideas are frightening because they threaten what is known. They are the natural born enemy of the way things are. Yes, ideas are scary and messy and fragile. But under the proper care, they become something beautiful. Today, we are launching into the world of tech in Ghana simply because there's a revolution going on, a tech revolution where people are solving basic challenges with technological innovations. And today, we are talking to Sat Minds. He's a co founder of Dream Oval. He'll tell you what Dream Oval is about, how the journey started. We want to talk about the story of Dream Oval because it started from a school project. So you ask a simple question, how does a school project transition into the kind of company that Dream Oval has become? Derry Dean, good morning. Key questions, what is Dream Oval all about? Um, our business is more about innovation. Our business is about transformation. Our business is about um, building a better society and um, we do that through tech that's all we are about we use technology to make life better we use technology to innovate for the good of society and the world um, we use technology to enable people make smart decisions we, we use technology to enable people generate wealth so we are about technology and how it can be used in different aspects of life to just make people's life um, better to let them fulfill their full um, life aspirations. Okay. But tell us simply the Dream Oval story. Is it true that I started from a school project? Tell us about that story. Um, so Dream Oval is, is um, a team of people who had different school projects mm -hmm. uh, who came together and thought that it would be useful mm -hmm. and uh, more, more successful if we chose to come together as a people and achieve the dreams individually but in a collective way. What that means is that we all had different things that we wanted to do and then we decide to pick each other's project and achieve it. You see, we want to talk specifics. What did you want to do? What did the other part? So I wanted to do a, a virtual stock exchange. I wanted to do a, a, a stock exchange in the cloud so that now we don't have to go to the stock market or to go to the floor of the market to trade and that will sit behind our computers and buy investment and buy shares um, and stuff like that. Um, somebody else, like my co-founder Claude, he was into payment so he had a whole concept of iWallet. Um, there was Henry who was more into um, intelligence, artificial intelligence, so he was more into intelli intelligent tra transport systems, talking about intelligent traffic light. So uh, these were different people's dreams and these were ones that um, we, we decided to actually pursue. So that's how it transitioned, but you, you get the sense that these success stories or your success story doesn't happen most of the time. The people get stuck at the idea stage, but you guys were young, you were ready to write it out. What is the difference between what you did and what other people who try such things and fail at them do? So what's the difference? Uh, actually, I wish I could tell you the difference. You know why? Because maybe they did exactly what we did, but they still didn't take off. Uh, but what, what made us succeed is really the, the mindset, one, that we believe that it was possible. Uh, um, two, another thing that made us succeed was that we also believe that at the time we didn't need, as individuals, we didn't need 
uh, a lot of money um, to to survive, right? Um, and then and then the other thing was that we had a very good team. We had a very skilled team um, from our team, which is very very important. And um, one of the key things that also made us success is the kind of training that we had from uni. Okay. Um, we had a chance to see a lot of success stories. Um, the people behind those success stories, like if you take someone like Paul Allen um, mm-hmm. from um, oh, yeah, Pakistan side, if you take someone like Paul Marit. Mm-hmm. So we met all these guys face to face. We had conversations with them, and it, it, it made it made a dream like more real. That look, this guy is just flesh and blood. I mean, they, they are intelligent. They've been able to do it. Yeah. We have similar opportunities, and I believe that's time that we, we should also endeavor. We could also do. Let's it. talk about uh, the specific product you have now. So we know you build software for or you provide software solutions for other customers right. but you also have some main products that you run and build yourself right. so right. what are those uh, projects right. um, products, so yeah. we have slide pay which is a, a payment and uh, money platform we have my text buddy which is a messaging platform we have kickly which is an, a customer engagement um, um, platform we have enterprise nurse which is a, an, in, an innovation platform for large organizations, large businesses. So um, we have this product and then we also have, we do consultants, we build bespoke software for banks okay. and other institutions. So for example, if you go to Stanley Bank, it's Legon, and their branch is paperless. Yeah. That infrastructure there is us. We built it from ground up. So these are the kind of things that we are trying to transform the way um, businesses operate, trying to let businesses actually take advantage of what technology offers to become more profitable, to scale, and to be able to serve more um, customers. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about three key things. First, partnership. You talk about that a lot. Yeah. You've got the right partners together. How key is a partnership at the beginning for the success of any business? Right. It's very, very important. Um, you can't do anything without relationship, without people. And uh, the people that you work with become your partners one way or the other, right? And you need these partners to provide either their skill set, either their money, either their time, either their jobs uh, or projects for you to, to build for them. So for us, it has been one of the key components of our progress and of our growth. Yeah. And, so uh, you're talking about customers in terms of your... Uh, Partners in terms of the customers and people you work with, yeah. but people you started your company right. with, for yeah. example. So yeah, so, so that that as well, very important. Like you know each other, you went to the same school. So in choosing your partner, for example, for us, it, it was key that we knew each other, we knew our personas, we knew our principles, we knew our values, and we we agree that for this number of period, this is what we are going to do. Um, and for us, that's worked for us uh, perfectly. Um, there's been, I don't think there's been much glitch in terms of the kind of bond that we've, we've shared in building this business. And everybody has been very cooperative, everybody has been that very quote unquote intimate in, a, in, in trying to drive uh, the dream of our agenda. And for me, I don't know. The price that I can, I can put on that has been priceless. Okay. Yeah. When you scout the tech space, you realize that people are doing fanciful things. So, someone built a, an app, for example, that can tell you when a rainstorm is coming for three or four days before it comes. Yeah. So, it's beautiful, but then they are faced with a challenge of monetizing yeah. it. You seem to have gotten the blend really well. Right. What would you say about that? Right. So there are different ways to monetize a product, and so, no I, idea is simple, but it's relevant as well because if I can tell when the rainstorm is coming from four days, what happens if I want to organize an event? At least I can use the app to do it. If I'm a farmer, at least I can use the app to determine how I should sow my seeds or when I should go to the farm. Uh, I can use it as a fisherman. I can use it as a worker when I should go to work and how I should go to work when I should close from work. So that idea. Yeah, it's, it's simple, but it's very relevant. Now, in trying to make money of that, because getting the idea done is not as difficult as it could have been back in the day because there's satellite, there's Google Maps, there's a lot of, um, how do you call it, resources out there to enable you to accomplish it. 
the key thing is getting a critical mass, mm -hmm. now use your product, mm -hmm. and then using that as a base to launch new services, mm -hmm. or using it as a base to generate revenue through advertising. Mm -hmm. So those are the dynamics. Do um, you agree that um, players in the tech space, especially the very young ones, do not monetize well enough? Because uh, the, the market has not enabled them too. Mm -hmm. For example, in Ghana, if your your app is on Google 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 Play Store, mm -hmm. you can't set up. Uh, you can't receive payment. Mm -hmm. But if you're in America, you can receive payment. So you mean that 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 the. the, the that there are constraints within the, the ecosystem yeah. or within the, the within the the how do you call it the same launch part yeah. that enables us you know um, set off um, or launch our, our product. Yeah. There are constraints we have to localize the whole ecosystem, make yeah. sure that we provide value at every end. So after after a local Ghanaian perhaps comes up with an app, there should be local opportunities for making money out of it and things like that. Yeah, making money is. Uh, is detected by how you're able to create value, so everybody can make money. If you, if I feel that I need what you are offering me, you can out pay for it. Now you don't also make money from individuals alone. You can, if I have one million people using my app, I can make money from what's the name from the corporate world. That hey, I have one million people using my app. It's a simple app that does weather forecasting. One million people. I have in-app notification or push notifications in-app. If you pay me to so a certain amount of money, I'm going to push a product for you. That is it. You can make money from it. So making money should not always be focused on one the customer using the app. Okay. It can also be from third parties who can utilize the data that you have. So I, I believe that one of the key things that people have to consider is how to harness the data and how to mine the data and make sense out of the data for other parties who may be interested to utilize and pay for it. And finally, what does the future hold for Dream Over? Um, in the next few years, you're not going to see us the same. We're going to scale. We're going to move into a new uh, edifice. We're going to list on the exchange for everybody to buy shares in Dream Over. Uh, we're going to go across borders. Um, so we're going to establish our offices um, in different countries. Um, Basically, the same thing: software enablement, yes, yes, technology for us, anything. And someday, I'm going to see Dreamover doing software for cars. Right. So, guys, that was uh, co-founder of Dreamover, Gary Dean Dati. I'm sure most of you have been listening, or well, you, you've been listening to stories about him. We've been hearing stories about him today. We've brought him into your home, to your offices, told the story how it all started from a school project, eight years or seven years on, to here see where they get next but the key is to inspire you to also start something or well, if you started already uh, work at it until it grows thank you my name is Emmanuel Christ